Okay, welcome everybody to Go in 5 Minutes, Episode 7. Today we're going to talk about vendoring your code dependencies. Uh, now this is a very important topic that has been changing at least over the past couple months, uh, if not longer. So uh, very important to uh, understand this. So let's start out. I just want to mention the email newsletter again. Uh, I'm really excited and humbled by the response here. Uh, the number of subscribers is way higher than I thought it would be uh, at this point. So uh, I'm also super excited that the first email is going to go out this week. So I uh, really encourage you to get in there and subscribe now. So let's get started. Uh, if you remember GoGet, GoGet is a very simple tool in the standard tool chain. Uh, you give it a package and it will go and figure out how to download that package from the internet. Whether it's from GitHub or Bitbucket or a custom HTTP endpoint or somewhere else, um, it has a well-known list of supported endpoints. Uh, or supported sources, should I say, uh, from which it can download code. Now, for dependency management, this is good and bad. It's good because it's very easy to put your dependencies, your libraries, up on the Internet for anybody else to consume. But it's bad because in the case of GitHub or Bitbucket, for example, if you update your code, everyone who is already go get, run go get to get your code will have the old code, and everyone from the point at which you update it onward will get the new code. So that leads to non-reproducible builds for people that are depending on your code to build their projects. Because some people may get the old code and then build against your old code, and others may get the new code and build against your new code. So that, of course, uh, can lead to code that relies on dependencies that won't build. Uh, it, really, it could also lead to more sinister issues, like if the semantic of your dependency changed, uh, an older build may work properly, while a new, newer build may not work properly. So the solution that the community has adopted is vendoring. Now, vendoring means simply taking all of the code that you depend on and putting it into your own repository, uh, right next to your code, usually. There has been some, uh, uh, quite a few implementations that do vendoring of tools that do vendoring for you, like GoDep, which is my favorite. Um, but standards are starting to emerge uh, for how to do vendoring in Go. The one that I'm uh, going to focus on today is this Go 1.5 vendor experiment. And if you click on that, you can go read the doc. Um, but I'm going to talk specifically today about a tool called Glide. And Glide is a tool that helps you vendor your code in such a way that the Go 1.5 build tool can understand your vendor, uh, your code in your vendored repository. So let's go look at the example now. So I've taken the code, the exact same code from episode 6. Uh, you don't have to understand what this code does in case you missed episode 6, although I highly encourage you to go check that episode out because it was a good one. Uh, all we have to understand today is this code's dependencies. So let's look here on line 8. This is, the, uh, this is Google's implementation of the GitHub API client in Go. We've got that as one of our dependencies. We've got the, uh, this test serve dependency, one of my libraries. And we also have Gorilla Mux, which of course is one of my favorite HTTP routers. So we can go use Glide to get and vendor these dependencies. So the first command we run is Glide, glide Create. Excuse me. Glide Create creates that Glide.yaml file to track all the dependencies. And now we can just start running Glide Get, which is the exact same thing as Go Get, except it puts the code inside of your vendor directory instead of on the global Go path. So there's one dependency. Now I'm going to go into my pre uh, my created script here. Download the other two, and I will go build, and there's an error there. You can see this is a transitive dependency, which is a dependency that one of my dependencies uh, depends on, which is a little confusing, but nevertheless, we can call glide get, get that dependency, and now clear out the history there, and you can see we're able to build. And we run the server just as we ran it in episode 6. And if you'd like on your own time, you can go and verify that it still works the exact same way as well. Now the code that I have checked in to the GitHub repository has all the vendored code. So 
in reality, just as promised, if you go uh, and get clone the code or download a tarball of that code, that code will run exactly the same as I'm running it right now, right now, on my computer. And I encourage you to go do that. Download the code. You can play around also with the Glide tool. You can read the Glide docs. You can also read that glideify.sh script that I've provided that I showed here. Uh, and I really encourage you to go check out Glide for yourself uh, and see if you can apply it to uh, one, or, one or more of your code bases. And also don't forget that Go15 vendor experiment environment variable as well, right before you run Go build. Uh, so that's all for today. Once again, I really encourage you to go sign up for that newsletter. Uh, but other than that, I hope to see you guys next week. Take care.